blessed good morning to each and every one of you. The family here at Ruby welcome you to this morning service. It seems as we get closer to the Easter tide, there's an air of excitement. I believe the spirit is moving. So we welcome each and every one of you and hope that you'll have a good time this morning in this service. That God's holy name will be uplifted and that you will be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. The worship team this morning will be led by Sister Callis Nichols, Sister Ruth Oliver, and Sister Sharon Small. After the first song, which is You Deserve the Glory, Sister Sharon Small would lead us to the throne of grace. God bless you as you worship with us today. Thank you so much for that introduction, Brother Clinton. Blessings of God be upon you. You deserve the glory, Lord. That's our first song this morning. the glory you deserve the honor and the praise oh god because there's none like you oh god father we know that there's only ones that stand and forever will be is you oh god father we praise you today because of who you are and in spite of whatever situations or whatever we may be going through god we still give you thanks we still give you praise oh god for you are still the same yesterday today and forever you are still a healer you are still god there's none that can change that, oh God. 
Today we are thankful, Lord oh God, that we can be in your presence, that we can lift up your name and glorify and honor you, oh God, like none can, oh God. Father, in these times, oh God, we remember, oh God, that you hold us, oh God, in the palm of your hand and you keep us safe, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, as like the songwriter said, that you will hide us, oh God, under your wings, oh God. We trust you, we praise you, and we glorify you, O oh God. And we pray that each heart today that are listening to us, wherever you may be in the hearing of our voices, that they'll be blessed, O oh God. And they'll be thankful, O oh God, that they can still hear a word from you as our word will come to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our worship with number 505. Glorious freedom. We have that freedom. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
continue with number 419, New Name in Glory. in place. Thank you, Lord.
God's word, and it will be done by no other than our dear brother Paul. He's our regular organist, but now he'll do the reading for us. Brother Paul. Thank you, Pastor Clinton. Um, I'm going to read Psalms 23, a very familiar psalm. So just join with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Before our speaker comes is number 256, Because He Lives.
Family, I hope that you have found our worshiping song inspiring and uplifting. At this time, we are ready for the word of God. And to bring God's words to us is none other than our dear pastor, the Reverend Dr. Samuel Elcock. I ask of you to listen intently to hear the words that he will bring to you. And I'm sure that at the end of it all, you will be blessed. Pastor Elcock, your congregation. Thank you very much, Minister Clernan. It is certainly a joy for me to be here this morning to share with you from God's word. I want to really express my appreciation to those involved or worship team, our ministry team, they are so glad to be in the presence of God. I must confess, family, that I really do miss you, and I look forward to the time when we can be back together as one big family. I hope you miss me the same way that I'm missing you, but it's a joy to be in the presence of God nevertheless, and I'm sure that we can worship God wherever we are. Join with me for just a brief word of prayer. Father, we thank you today because of who you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. You have promised us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we hold to that promise. And now as I share your word, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, my Redeemer. From the portion of scripture that was read not too long ago, Psalm 23, I'm sure that when that Psalm was read, there are those of you who may not have even had to use your Bible because this is one of the Psalms that is so very familiar to us. The Psalm that is taught at school, the psalm that is taught at church. This is a psalm that most of us are familiar with. And I really want to share with you today words of encouragement because I'm sure that every morning as we wake from our beds, all that we are hearing is bad news. And so therefore, I want to assure you that even though you may just be hearing bad news. The good news is that Jesus is still alive. Amen. Jesus still saves. Jesus still keeps. And so therefore we can feel excited within ourselves that there is still hope. The present situation will be brought to an end someday. But what I've realized is that when that does happen, every nation and tribe on this earth would have experienced a situation which would be etched in our minds for generations to come. But what seemed to be most significant to me is the fact that out of all of the world's religion, the religion that seemed to be most targeted, the religion that the microscope seemed to be focused on is the Christian religion. And I believe that this has happened even though the atheists and others like that would not want to recognize the power of God. I believe that the present situation substantiates the fact as recorded in Philippians 2.10. God has exalted him, that is Jesus, and given him not a name, given him the name, which is above other names. And I want to pay very special attention to this. 
that at the name of Jesus, not some knees, every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. Everyone will recognize this name. Not only under the earth, it goes on to say to us, and every tongue should confess. If they don't confess it now, they will have to confess later that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So there is hope for us. There is hope and consolation for us who presently recognizes the power of Jesus Christ and are calling upon his name. We are not waiting for later. We are doing it now. We are calling on the name of Jesus Christ. But I am paying very special attention to what is being said about the church, about those persons who is always had issues with the church. There are those who are saying that the Christian have no faith. There are those who are on their WhatsApp and whatever means that they're able to say things like this. There are those who are saying that the church is weak. There are those who are saying that the church is powerless. But what really impacts me is the fact that those same persons who are saying that the way the faith of the church, why is it that the church people and, and the pastors don't go to the hospital and go to those places where people are suffering from this ailment? Why, why do our pastors go and lay hands on those people and, and, and seem somehow to bring them back to a state of normalcy? So because that does not appear to be happening, there are those who are seeing that the church is weak, the church is hopeless. But would you really believe that the very same people who are asking for the church to exercise its faith, when those churches who, who flunk the law, those churches who go contrary to common sense, do exactly what they are saying, they are now saying the church is unruly. The church does not recognize protocol. And the church is accused of being a part of spreading the virus because there are those seemingly fall to that temptation. There are those who refuse to adhere to the instructions given to us by the World Health Organization and are founded themselves in a very precarious position. I have got news for you today, family, and I've got news for those detractors. I want to say to you this very slowly. The child of God has nothing to prove. The child of God should know who he is or who she is. The child of God shall never allow the enemy to place them under any microscope. The enemy's microscope has nothing to do with the children of God. The child of God does not have to be placed under any microscope to identify who she or he is. Because the child of God already is accounted for. The child of God has already been bought with a price. The child of God has been bought, bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. So no one who is called by the name of Christ 
should be allowing him or herself to be tempted by those who always looked for an opportunity to say negative things about the church. The church has a responsibility to adhere to all the instructions that are given to us by those of authority. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 say this to me. As a matter of fact, I get the distinct impression that this says how sheep should respond in the midst of wolves. Hear what Matthew says to us. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. There are lots of wolves out there. Hear what the Bible says to us as children of God in these very difficult times. But ye therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So as children of God, we, we do not want to be tempted to prove to anyone that we can do a lot of things. God knows best. I also noticed that when Jesus was tempted in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, I, I want us to pay very careful attention to these verses because these are the verses that speak to me, especially when the church seemed to be attacked by some persons in the community. Hear what Jesus said when he was placed in a very uh, meticulous position. He is hungry. He's fasting. And the enemy knew exactly what he was doing. Hear what Jesus said to the enemy when he asked him to turn stones into bread. Jesus could have done it, but he did not allow the enemy to tempt him. Hear what Jesus says. But he answered and said, It is written, and the enemy knows the scriptures very well. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Therefore, we do not have to subject ourselves to the trick of the enemy who would want to make the church feel as though that we are a wasting time. We are hopeless. We do not have any faith. We do not have this. And we do not have that. The church of Jesus Christ will stand forever. The children of God know who they are serving. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The psalmist David in Psalm 23. Psalm written by David at the time he was king of ancient Israel. And it is said that this had been used by ancient Hebrew for worship. The writer describes God as his shepherd, his protector, and his provider. The writer of this psalm sees God as a good shepherd, one who knows his sheep. The writer assures us that this shepherd takes care of his sheep. The writer of this psalm would assure us that the sheep are not destroyed by any predator or starvation because of this shepherd. The writer said, He said those things because the writer, the author of this psalm, knew the shepherd personally and experienced his protection. Therefore, the writer of this psalm, the Lord is my shepherd because he understood who his shepherd was. 
Hear what he says to us in Psalm 46 as a means of encouragement. God is, not God was, or intend to be. The author says, in this troubled time, God is our refuge. God is our strength. And for those who may feel that God is far removed from them, he goes on to say, a very present help in trouble. Amen. This shepherd informs us, therefore, we do not have to fear sheep. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the mist, of the sea. This shepherd, according to David, and his experience with the shepherd, he says, you have nothing to fear, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. This shepherd informs us that there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. David informs us that this shepherd, God, is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. God is in the midst of her. The heathens, they raged and they will always rage. That's their responsibility. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and, and the earth melt. I'm wondering if he's uttering his voice today. The entire world is in chaos. I love this part. The Lord of hosts is with his people. I want to remind us as children of God. Do not give up. Do not ever lose hope. The Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob. The God of Isaac. The God of Abraham, the God of David, the God of Moses, the God of Elijah, the God of the three Hebrew boys, the God of Jacob and all the like, that God is still our refuge. So we don't need to fear as though we don't have, have any hope. When you have this shepherd, no weapon that is formed against you shall ever prosper. The church has a reason to rejoice. We don't have to prove anything to anybody. The only thing that the church has to continue to do is preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church's responsibility in these difficult times is to ensure that we maintain our relationship with God. When you have got this shepherd, not only no weapon formed against you will prosper, we can be assured that this shepherd has got our backs. I've seen on occasions when persons would have been taking their sheep on pasture, and I've seen on occasions when some stray dogs would have come to attack the sheep, and I've seen some little shepherds because there are some big shepherds and small shepherds that take the sheep to pasture, but I've seen some little shepherds who were not capable of handling those dogs ran and left the sheep 
only to be destroyed by those three animals. But I thank God this morning that we have got a shepherd that no three animal, no wild animal, nothing can prevent that shepherd from making sure that his sheep are well protected. We have got a shepherd that regardless to what bullet, regardless to what is levied at his sheep, we have got a shepherd in Jesus Christ and we have ownership because like David, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know about you, but that same God to whom David referred, that same God is my shepherd. I rejoice this morning because he's not only my shepherd, but he is the shepherd of all of us who are called his sheep. So we will go through this. The Bible tells me those who will live godly shall endure some persecution. So, so we go through this. It also informs me that the rain will fall on the just and on the unjust. We have a shepherd that we will lack nothing. This shepherd is capable of providing for us. We don't have to, to do things that are unethical. We don't have to do things that are outside of God's will. We have got a shepherd who understands the need of every sheep. We have got a shepherd who provides for every sheep. We have got a shepherd who says to us that regardless to what we are going through, he will lead us into green pastures. I've also seen in recent times when there, there was seemingly no rain, I, I've seen several like stock tied out to pasture with nothing to eat. The grass was dry. The persons who were responsible for them never even seemed to have brought any water for them to drink. There was no shelter for them. Oh, but I bless God that we have got a shepherd that is prepared to provide for us water because he himself is the spring of living water that will never dry up. We have got a shepherd that provides seed by day. We have got a shepherd that assures us that whenever he places us to pasture, it will be green. So don't give up. Don't lose hope. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. I thank God for a shepherd that when your soul seems as though it is given out, I have a shepherd that has the ability to bring your soul back to a place of comfort. Surely goodness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow the children of God the sheep of God's pastor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow them wherever they go. Goodness and mercy follow them all the days of their life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Are we not happy this morning that we've got a good shepherd in Jesus Christ? Listen to me today. There are those who are seeking, they are searching for leadership. They are asking questions about their leaders, uh, especially politically. But I thank God that, that my shepherd is not a political leader. I thank God that he understands what it means to lead us and to take care of us and to protect us. We can rejoice this morning with joy on and full of glory. Let us thank God for his goodness, his leading, his provision, his protection, his love. We have got a shepherd in Jesus Christ. And like David, we can all say in unison, the Lord 
is our shepherd. We bless God today. We worship God today. He's a good God. He's a wonderful God. So stand to your feet and give God some praise and give God some glory and be celebrated the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, then sings my soul.
truly we have been blessed in bringing this service to you this morning and we hope that you have been blessed your company has been greatly appreciated throughout the service and we look forward to meeting you again and having you in worship with us here at the Ruby Church of the Nazarene God bless you and we thank you very much for being with us. Our worship team will come now and we'll finish with a few courses to bless your heart.